Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about two-step synthesis problems. Um, and particularly, the key skill here is identifying a logical intermediate uh, in a two-step synthesis problem. Now, you're not always going to immediately recognize a, two, a synthesis problem as a two-step problem, but once you can apply the skill for a two-step problem and identify a logical intermediate, you can start to then apply that same skill to break down longer synthesis problems into discrete steps. And once you've got the steps, solving a synthesis problem becomes as simple as answering the questions of what reagents do I need to convert one thing into another. So basically the goal is to break multi-step synthesis problems down into one-step synthesis problems, which you probably already know how to solve. <coughs> I want to do two examples in this video. One, we're going to talk about moving a functional group, and then the, we're going to talk about a second example uh, where we're changing the carbon skeleton. So let's start by moving a functional group. And what if I want to do this transformation? Uh, where we're going to change vinyl cyclohexene to ethylidine cyclohexene. Uh, we're moving the alkene one position towards this, the cyclohexene ring. And so we start off by asking ourselves, what kind of reactions do I need? Uh, I mean, we start off by wanting to ask, because I've asked this, what is the logical intermediate? But we might not know how to get there for this kind of, of, uh, for this kind of, of synthesis. So let's look. Um, we have an alkene. So uh, back in the synthesis toolbox video, I suggested you think about characteristic reactions. So character, what are the characteristic reaction? of alkenes. Uh, most alkene reactions are addition reactions. So our characteristic alkene reactions are addition reactions. I also had asked in that video for you to think about the characteristic ways that you can make a particular uh, functional group. And so how do we make alkenes? We make alkenes mostly by elimination reactions. And what does an elimination reaction need? Elimination reaction needs a leaving group. It's a leaving group. And we can ask ourselves, do we know uh, leaving groups that can be added by addition reactions? Yes. Yes, we can. Right. So, oh. Addition reactions can add things that are leaving groups or, or that can be easily converted into leaving groups. We're not going to get too specific about the, the, the what leaving group we're going to talk about. Okay. And now the next question is, so I want my intermediate my intermediate is going to have a leaving group. Where, where do I want that leaving group? And in the case where you're moving functional groups and, the, and you're moving them to adjacent positions, sometimes it's pretty easy to, to answer that question, but you might not see how to get it started. Okay, okay so let's let's bring our two compounds down. Uh, I don't need the, the reaction arrow at the moment. Um, if we're gonna do an addition reaction on the first compound, we know that we can do addition reactions. Um, and those addition reactions, ooh, that's big. But we'll, we'll leave it there. Have to happen at one of these two carbon atoms. See if I can find something else that I can know. Nope. Okay. All right. If we're talking about an elimination reaction to make this other alkene, we know uh, from our study of elimination reactions that 
the one of the two carbons where the leaving group was is going to be part of the alkene. So in order to make this alkene, we need to have a leaving group at one of these two carbons. And now you can ask yourself, what do these two structures where I've marked things have in common? Well, I've marked a circle on both structures at this position. We're going to put a leaving group here. And so our logical intermediate is going to look like this. What it, what, now we need to eventually choose a specific leaving group. Uh, and so at the moment, let's choose, um, let's have our generic leaving group and let's choose as our logical intermediate bromine. I have a reason for choosing bromine and it's, that's because there are more reactions that are regioselectively put bromine in places than, than the other halogens. <clears throat> And so here's our logical intermediate. Now, our synthesis problem simplifies from, oh my goodness, how do I move that alkene to, how do I convert my alkene starting material into this intermediate? And how do I convert that intermediate into my alkene target compound? And there are ways for this to work. We can react the alkene with hydrogen bromide and it'll undergo a Markovnikov uh, addition to form the product here. And then we could do uh, an E2 elimination here. And we wanna choose a base that prefers the more substituted spot. And so we wanna choose a base like sodium ethoxide in ethanol as our E2 conditions to generate the product the most more substituted spot. Now you might look at me and say, wait, 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 right? This first reaction generates a carbocation and so it could rearrange and maybe you get the, this product as a competition and then that second E2 reaction isn't going to be as competitive. You're right. It's that's that is a that is a chance that we might take. Uh, we do know, however, that there is a way to if we switch if we switch bromine for for oh for for an alcohol. Sorry, I lost myself there. We can do. Uh, an oxymercuriation reaction uh, uh, followed by demercuriation to make that alcohol and then we can change how we do our elimination Uh, we can change how we do our elimination to a way that will take care of the alcohol by first, say, converting it to the tosylate, and then, say, uh, choosing to do the same, almost the same E2 elimination that we'd have done before. So ultimately, there are a couple of ways. One of the things that you are going to find as you start working through synthesis problems is that many synthesis problems may have more than one correct answer. Some people get uh, unnerved by this because they have been trained to think of synthesis problems as having only one error, or problems in science as having only one answer. Well, we're now in a world where there are multiple correct answers. And once you come to terms with that, I'd like to that to hope that it actually frees you to be more creative and to think about ways that this can work instead of paralyzing you uh, 
and in fear of doing something wrong because there are fewer things wrong in, in a synthesis problem. I wanted to do one more example uh, in determining a logical and intermediate. Uh, I'll go through this one a little bit more quickly. Uh, here is a case where I'm going to convert this alkyl halide into the carboxylic acid. Uh, it's worth count noting that there are six carbon atoms in the starting compound and seven carbon atoms in the product. So we are looking at changing the carbon skeleton. Now, depending on where you are and what reactions you know about, you may actually recognize multiple ways that this could be done, but I'm going to share with you um, this sort of logical intermediate that I thought of, which is I look at this carboxylic acid and at the spot where I am in the course that I am myself teaching right now, we only know of one way to make carboxylic acids and that's through ozonolysis of alkynes. So now I have this intermediate and all I need to do is figure out how can I convert my uh, alkyl halide into that alkyne and note this alkyne has eight carbons in it. So I need whatever I do, this reaction needs to add two more carbons and both of those carbons are the two from the alkyne. So there's a way to do that. If you remember the terminal alkynes, and that includes uh, acetylene, the simplest of all terminal alkynes, are acidic and can be deprotonated and make these acetylide anions that are then good nucleophiles for SN2 type reactions. We can react the alkyl halide with sodium acetylide, make the alkyne undergo ozonolysis to make the carboxylic acid. So once again, the key uh, skill component here is if you can identify a logical intermediate, you can break a two-step problem down into two one-step problems. In the next video, I'm going to introduce uh, approaches to more complicated problems, but they basically follow the approach of trying to break a multi-step synthesis problem down into a sequence of one-step synthesis problems. Thank you for watching.